Suid-Afrikaanse landbouw word die afgelopen drie jaar geteister door back and klauw. En om oor die impact en moendelike oplossings te praat, het ons vir Dr. Mpom Maja, directeer van dierengezondheid by die Departement van Landbouw hier by ons in die atelier. Dr. Maja, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. So what's the main reason behind the recurrent outbreaks of foot and mouth disease in South Africa? It's, it's a multiple of um, reasons. Um, one of them being the inability of people in the protection zones to market their animals. So what we have realized is that because of that inability, there's a lot of illegal movements out of the protection zone into the rest of the country. And that is one of the reasons um, that we have cases um, which we have traced back to the protection zone in the free, free zone of the country. Mm. So red meat producers across the country have come together to, to work on a plan. Uh, what are some of the strategies you've put in place to, to contain the spread? As I've identified one of the biggest concerns and the biggest problems, um, we have now come together and we are working on a marketing strategy for communities in the protection zone. You would have realized that in the recent past we've also gazetted and designated areas that we call disease management areas. So the measures that we are now putting in place or the strategies we are putting in place also cover communities in these disease management areas, both in Limpopo as well as in KZN. So in a nutshell, what we want to do is to create opportunities for them to fatten their animals, to market their animals, um, so that they are able to have a livelihood um, similar to people in the free zone. So Dr. Marja, those strategies speak specifically to developing farmers who, as you've said, need access to market, but all role players need to be involved in the prevention. How do we see farmers working together? So the first thing is awareness, make people appreciate and understand why we are doing what we are doing. And for industries, we need to roll up our sleeves and make sure that whatever strategy that both the government as well as organized industry come up with, we buy into it and we implement it. One of the simple things that we've been talking about, for example, for the last probably 10 years, is livestock identification and movement control. If we can all put our efforts into individual animal identification, which we've already started working on, there is a LITS, LITS standing for livestock identification and tracing system. Uh, if we can all put our heads together and make sure that the system is functional and operational, we would be able to pick up disease as quickly as, as it happens. The other strategy is that of biosecurity. Government does not have cattle except for few research and few farms here and there. So it's up to the individual owners to make sure that their farms have good biosecurity measures that they don't just willy-nilly introduce animals, that they don't know where they are coming from, because that's how diseases are transmitted from one farm to the other, not just foot and mouth disease, but a whole host of other diseases. So biosecurity is one of the things that each individual farmer need to buy into practice on a daily basis and commit to. Mm. Dr. Marge, in the 80s, uh, the UK saw such a bad outbreak of foot and mouth disease that they had to end up burning vast numbers of cattle. We're not quite there yet. How does the picture look overall? The world has fortunately moved away from those practices of culling and, and destroying animals, especially for foot and mouth disease, because animals do recover. So our strategy varies. Um, between the different farming practices, if I could call it that. So in the communal areas, we are vaccinating and we are allowing those animals to, for the virus to subside and we will, leave, um, we will leave the restrictions once we are ready to leave the restrictions. So that process is called vaccinating to leave. In other communities, for example, where we want to get rid of the infection as quickly as possible so that we can um, resume our trade, such as in the Northwest, we are deploying what we call vaccination to kill. So we vaccinate those animals, subside the infection uh, pressure, 
and we are going to slaughter them. We are not going to kill them because foot and mouth doesn't affect people, it doesn't affect consumers, so that meat is perfectly safe for consumption. So we are going to slaughter those animals for human consumption. Very insightful discussion. Thanks for those solutions. Thank you.